My name is Hà, Tiểu Hà, and it is my honor to be on the stage of TEDx HCMUS today. Okay, so before starting my speech, let's take um, about 20 seconds to imagine. So imagine you're in a forest like this. A misty forest, I would say. There's no one around you. You're all by yourself. And the scary part is you hear the sounds of howling from wolves and other creatures living in this area. It's freezing and just horrifying. You're desperately trying to look for a way out, and all you want is somewhere that is safe. This is how I used to describe my own feeling of uncertainty. The emotional state of uncertainty can just be feeling with your fingers, sweating your palms, and feeling how your heart is racing rapidly. We all connote uncertainty as a negative feeling because it brings us the ambiguity and the unsureness in our decisions. And instead, we would prefer certainty, the quality of being reliably true. So how can uncertainty be the foundation of hope? Isn't hope mean something positive? And how can these two concepts be put together? Because my own uncertainties have initiated one of the most significant choices that I've ever made. Do you still remember the uh, forest story I've told you at the beginning of the speech? That would exactly reflect my emotional state at the end of high school. So at the age of 18, I felt uncertain. I did not know what to expect in front of me. I did not know whether the path that I chose was suitable for me. And I did not anticipate how college would be so different. There were voices around me telling me what to do, what to choose, which way to go, but I always find that ambiguity in my decision. I guess this is a stage where everyone has experienced the fear of what's ahead, the loss in direction, and simply the rapid change to the adulthood. And so rather than moving forward, I decided to choose something that is not really common taking a gap year. So the next question would be, why did I decide on taking a gap year? So at first, I thought that taking a gap year was a safe decision. Like, what could go wrong taking a step back? I thought that this would give me the certainty that I've been looking for, and the perfect opportunity for me to reaffirm myself. But it is not all that it appears to be. So. Imagine again, a lot of imagination in this speech, but imagine taking a gap year was like a blank piece of paper, like here. You can draw, write, color, do whatever you want on this piece of paper. There's no rules, no restrictions or guidelines on what you have to do. So the freedom that you've got at first might sound fun, but then gradually you find yourself lost in this freedom. Seeing how your friends have started their university life, making new connections, and just fully enjoying their best moments in university, and you're still here all alone. There's no specific goals on what you have to do, and you're slowly losing your sense of purpose. But now let's jump to the uh, positive side of taking a gap year. The positive thing about taking a gap year is that you're in complete control of yourself doing all the things that you have always been wanted to do and having a mental break from studying. And that was when I decided to step outside of my comfort zone and become an extracurricular activity specialist. Being in this position requires me to strategize and guide students on their projects and explore their interests outside of school. After some time in this position, there's one thing I see in myself is that I have an inner passion for education. Seeing all the happy faces when my students have accomplished a project suddenly sparks me the idea of learning more aspects in the educational field. I just felt an indescribable good feeling of joy with a glimpse of pride. And that was that when I then started to take the initiative in becoming a speaker for student organization events and a content creator for my own blog on selling tips and knowledge. Gradually, I have in mind the ultimate goal of becoming someone who inspires the hope of education. And with that, relating to the major that I want to pursue in university, media and business, changing how media platforms can be more 
educational and inspirational for younger generations. I no longer want the portrayal of education on social media to become a pressure, but should be a positive catalyst for future hope. So when you ask me how I view uncertainty, I would define it as the positive doubt. It allows you to question yourself in order to direct your next steps. Uncertainty is something that pushes you to become more open-minded about what's ahead and accepting your fears and insecurities. We are currently living in uncertain times. There's nothing predictable, really. So why not embrace uncertainty? Let's take a gap year as an example. I was drowned in the anxieties and frustrations in the freedom this year. But when I started to open up my perspective, I realized how I could take advantage of this time. To me, embracing uncertainty is when we accept the unknown, perceive things from different standpoints, and select the best option that reflects our needs. And isn't that when we find hope, the feeling of trust, and the desire for good things to happen? So although it may seem like I don't have any uncertainties right now, but I know that uncertainty will and still exist. But now I've learned the lesson of embracing uncertainty, opening my mindset for opportunities and hope. I guess my visual image of uncertainty is no longer the frightening forest, but instead it is a chilly forest with an open door leading to the unknown. I might be anxious, but I will be excited to see what's ahead. Who knows, the next time that you face uncertainty in your decision, it may lead to something extraordinary. Thank you for listening.